Tilo, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, behind me, this is the Lit One Live YouTube channel. Anything when I do go live, anything that you miss, funny moments, blah, 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 etc., they'll be here. Link down in the description. We do got the Discord. The link to this is down in the description as well. Y'all know what the Discord is. You drop your request in there. We get to them eventually. Uh, Patreon. It's everything that's on Patreon is in this little box. Link down in the description. And this is the Facebook, man. That's where all my old videos are at, man, which will be uploaded soon now. British boxer on drug deals, fighting, and murders in the prison, in the Thai prison. This is by Lad Bible TV, you know. Let's get into it. Should be an interesting one. My early childhood was um, one of, of violence and being subjected to beatings and beat He's a lad. <laughs> all right. Dad was just sitting in the house getting bevied all the time. He was on the ale, you know. And he was a bit of a he was a bit of a boxer back in his day. So for me, I wanted to impress him and I wanted to be acknowledged and loved by him and I joined a boxing club. It was more of a family than the one at home. And I remember running home excited, telling my dad that I was having a fight. It was my first fight, it was in Waterloo. And he, he was sitting in the front room, smoking a cigarette, with his can of lager by the side of the chair. I was about 12, 13 years old. I said, I'm fighting, Dad. And he just, he didn't even look at me. He just said, if you don't knock him out in the first round, I'm going to knock you out. That's all he said to me. What did boxing mean for you at this time? Boxing, f to me, I, you know, I won. I had about 16 fights, and, and I won a, a massive majority of them. You know, I had dreams. I wanted to, to join the army. I wanted to, to box for England. And I kind of, like, found myself moving away from it because I started finding, you know, friends outside of the gym. The training and the thought of training became a little bit, oh, I can't be bothered. I'm getting up in the morning, doing that one, going to the gym. You know, I felt like I was missing out all the time. If I don't go... It probably wasn't. Probably wasn't. People, a lot of people have a fear of missing out. Like, eh, I ain't missing nothing. My dreams are way more bigger than bigger than going out and partying. So, be in the crib, put up. <laughs> if we go to the gym, I'm gonna miss out on this. I'm getting offered joints and drinks, and I don't want it. But I feel a need to to fit in. You picked us. You picked up a substance. Now you're, you know, you need to go and fund the habit that you've developed. And that's what happened for me. You know, when it started small, car stereos, wheel trims, you know. Doing what you do as kids to, to fund these little drug habits that you've got, because we're all skint. There's no, there's no money, there's no jobs. How old were you the first time you went to jail, and what was it for? I was, um, I think it was about seventeen. It was an attempted robbery. I was uh, hooked. So you went from. You know what I'm saying? Now, now, granted, you know, this is when most of these stories started. They have a terrible uh, childhood, terrible... One of the parents is terrible or something. Was going to boxing. Wasn't really doing it for himself. Wanted to impress his dad. Fell into the wrong crowd. Got addicted to whatever he was doing. Feed the habit. Okay. By this time on heroin. Oh, he you was I class A. Bob Shumon. Well, I tried to. And I get arrested by the police. And he remind me in HM YOY Hinley in Wigan. That's a new prison. I ain't never heard of that one. HM YOY Hinley. HM YOI Hinley. A prison greater Manchester, England. In Wigan. And I remember sitting in Michelle one, 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 one morning and the weather was booming outside. It was dead hot. I thought, I've had enough of this. I can't cope, I can't carry on like this no more. 
I want to phone my mum. I haven't spoken to my mum for about a year. She doesn't know where I am. I don't think my ma cares. I don't think anyone cares. I'm not getting no letters. I'm not getting no visits. You know, I feel really uh, lonely. Dials my mum's number. She answers after a few, a few rings and I said, Mum, it's me, Billy. And as soon as she heard my voice, I could, I could hear the love and the, um, wow, yeah. It, it just, it just hit me, like a ton of bricks, like solid in the chest. And I, I had this, this, this overwhelming feeling of like, like emotion and my eyes were welling up. That's what depression, These two. that's what low-key depression do to you. It make you feel like nobody is on your side. Hit that phone call though, man, love her mama. Screws were standing next to me and I thought, I cannot blink here. I couldn't even speak to me mum because I knew my voice would tremble and the tears would just fall down my face. And she knew, it was like her mother's instinct, she just said, son, I know you're in. Just ask for help. And I was like, mm, okay. Because it's a neat seed. I was okay, I just went back to the cell, sat in that cell, and I sobbed. Uh, once that door was shut, I wrote a letter to a probation officer. They came to see me. She said, what can we do? I said, look, I'm on drugs, I want to get off them. I don't want to get out, and I don't want to live the life I'm living. What can you do for me? He said, we can, um, we can put you up in a rehabilitation, up on release. I'd relocated to Bristol. You know, Bristol. I thought, like, Geographically, Liverpool was the problem, and I never understood that the problem lies within. It always has done. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Now, that I agree with that, but your environment do be a part of it, though. It, it be, it be, it it, it, it play its part. <laughs> so I met this other, this this kid from Liverpool called Ben, and he had five years clean. Now I had about three months under my belt. So him, he was a god. I put him on a pedestal. Five years. How have you stayed clean off heroin and crack cocaine, lad, for five years? And he was just showing me, you know, uh, this new way of life. He was a little full of adventure. He'd been abroad. I thought, I haven't left Liverpool. He's telling me he's going to Thailand. He'd been the year before. Would I like to come? Showed me this idea. Told me what a great place it was to be. The food, you know, the culture. Everything about it was uh, incredible, and I fell in love with the thought of it. I like Thai food. Yeah, we go. Three months backpacking. Mm. That was the plan anyway. You know, and I'm like a world-class card-carrying pleasure seeker. You know, I just want to, you know, experience fun and joy in, in every other way but taking drugs. So I want to relive, like, lost dreams, and I want them to awaken, and I love boxing as a kid, and, you know, I love Thai, Muay Thai. Boxing, I love watching it, I love watching the sport. Muay Thai, Thai martial arts, and the country's national sport. You know, I remember my mate saying to me, don't get in the ring with these ties, like they'll break your hips. So I got in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> and I swear, I got my ribs broken within the first two rounds. And I learned a lesson and I was resenting the kid who did it and I said, I'll come back. And six weeks later, I got back in and I beat him. You know, and I fell in love with it. Boxing, did that become your kind of predominant thing that you ended up doing in Thailand? Like, was that your main focus? Yeah, boxing was definitely my main focus in Thailand. Um, it kept me there, it gave me purpose. I was disciplined. You know, I was maintaining my recovery. And what it did do was, uh, because I was, you know, because I could, I was, I could speak English, obviously, and um, we'd walk around with the box and I'd speak to the, the other tourists and say, you know, can we support these boxers because they're putting on a show? And they'd give me a little bit of uh, money at the end of the night. And I, be I, I it became a regular thing every single night. I was fighting three, four times a night. That's a lot. And I always fought, even though they were, like, it was show fights to them. I, it was, to me, it was a real fight, you know, I was, Moving away from like the meetings and recovery and mm. spending more time, you know, with these ties and in the ring and meeting girls. girls. And I met this girl and I fell in love with her. She couldn't speak a word of English. The relationship was based on a dictionary. You know, and I found out that she had another fella, another partner. <laughs> and I was just so broken and so hurt and so deluded. 
and uh, all my feelings were all over the place and, and, and getting in the ring was not the answer. It didn't solve. Every, every issue is always brought back to the front by a female. It'd it be feeling like all of these stories would the common denominator be a few common denominator to be a female. The problem it didn't take away the pain, and I remember sitting in a bar on my own, staring at this drink, and I said, "Can I have a double whiskey?" Poured it. It's in front of me. You know, you got to remember, I'm three years abstinence at this this time, sitting there staring at it, and it's like I'm fighting with myself. You know, and the f it's kicked in. I just picked her up and I drank it and that was it. Picked up the phone, spoke to another foreigner that I knew. He was he was actively taking drugs and drinking. I told him to meet me. He met up and said, what do you need? I said, cocaine. Turned up. Came back about five minutes later and gave us these little pink pills with WI on them. What are we going to do with these? They want tablets. They didn't want ecstasy or... You know, no, you smoked them, put them on the... F w -A, -B a a street name for methamphetamine, a highly addicted and harmful stimulant drug. Foil well, started to show us how to do it, brought a little tube, put it in a mouth, put a little flame under this pill, and it just changed. It turned into oil. It started as a bubble, and smoke started to come up. It was passed to me. It was just an air bill. <laughs> wow. I had this feeling that just, just. Feeling of crackhead. Feeling the crackhead in your body. It's over. It was just exhilarating. You know what I wanted more? And here we go, you got to chasing that first high again that you can never achieve twice. Were you aware of the, the potential consequences of being caught with drugs in Thailand? Because it's quite severe penalties. Do you know what, to be honest, I remember it didn't really hit home when, I'm, when I was buying these drugs and taking them. You know, I felt it was untouchable. I was invincible because the police had pulled you up regular on these motorbikes and you wouldn't be wearing helmets and they'd be taking backhanders off you and you know they were corrupt as you know as as the police force over there is and that's what i thought would happen you know i'd always get away with it as to be fair i started i developed a habit with the yabba right that's it as soon as i pick up i'm using i'm in the grip of addiction i need to fund it fighting wasn't enough i wasn't earning enough money Someone offered me a way out. Here's a pack of pills. Sell them to the tourists in the clubs. You know, you can use, you can, you can, you can pay us what you need to, and, and and life can be a little bit better for you. So that's what I did. Got you locked in forever with that, with that, with that type of uh, offer. Oh, you can use, you can do whatever, just pay us back. Like you locked in forever. You're an addicted user. You are gonna use all of their stuff. <laughs> and um, big mistake. And when they raided my room, the police, they were looking around and was like, is this like a Rambo movie? What's going on here? There was no windows in this apartment. It was just a dingy little apartment. So I shut the door, sat with me back against it, thinking, oh, you're messing. <sighs> bam, 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 bam. So I was getting banged, banged on. I just a bang, 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 bang. Open the door, police. And I went, no, I don't believe you. Throws your ID and I'm stalling a new. Straight away, the police, you know what I mean? An ID card come under the door. I didn't even look at it, I just seen her face. I said, fuck, I put it back, open the door. They've rushed in, had me on the floor, face down, hands behind my back, a little clap, clip around the back of the head, and that was it, I was arrested. You know, and I just thought, that's it, I'm going down. How was that first night in prison, and, and how did you feel? And I remember going into the cell and it was just shocker. So when they bang, 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 knocked on the door, you had no time to flush? They patiently waited for you to view the ID? The tire mates, there was about 80 
é meio sem chão. And it was like a tin of sardines. There was no space whatsoever. And I looked around at all the eyes looking up at me. And I had to put that mask on again. I was terrified, you know, but I was acting brave at the same time, like that little bit of a swagger. And I went in and I got ordered to, to sleep in the corner next to this guy who'd passed away. They've got strobe lights on 24 hours a day. You go out in the morning. You got ordered to sleep next to a, an, an unalived body? Why was it still in there? Well, this is a Thai prison. Okay. You know, the sun's hitting you at six, seven in the morning when you get opened up. You're out until about five in the evening. It's still light. You put in your shell. The lights are on in your shell. You've got a hard concrete floor. There's no mattresses. You know, I'm sleeping next to a trolley. No people are in and out. There's no privacy, you know, you, and, and, you know, and I'm eating food and it's causing problems in my stomach and I've got diarrhea and it, I'm sick all the time. I'm still suffering with rolls with these drugs. You know, I'm using on the slightest, and just, you can't really use anything anywhere. You have to go to really, like the toilets, put a blanket over you. I mean, the toilets outside in the compound where people were selling the bodies, they'd have, they'd have makeshift tents and they'd be selling the bodies for cigarettes and, you know, Sticky rice. You said inside of a Thai prison, is it like, what you mean they were selling their body for sticky rice? They were selling their bodies for sticky rice and, wait, go back, man. It's outside in the compound where people were selling the bodies. They'd have, they'd have makeshift tents and they'd be selling the bodies for cigarettes and, you know, sticky. Men were selling their body to men for, for oh, we are in Thailand. All right. Sticky rice. A mango. How were your fellow inmates uh, treating you and, and I suppose how were the guards treating you being a foreigner? Well, I was, um, I was very volatile and reactive and I couldn't communicate with them and that was a struggle. I'm trying to explain to them how I felt and, you know, telling someone I was feeling sad and I felt lonely and hurt and you know, not being able to to convey that to to them to to the ties was really difficult. And if they speak to me, and I could sense they were speaking to me with a bit of venom, then I'd react and I'd be fighting with them. Now the ties, they don't fight on their own. There's never a one to one. It's they call it mm. mamu, which is like they were jumping you. They was on gang business, is what they call that in Chicago. Or they was on pack okay. of dogs. You didn't want the all jump on you. And I had that a few times. And I remember coming out the first morning and getting involved in a fight with these three foreigners, these two Australians and an, and an Iranian. One hit me over the head with a chair, one punched me in the head with these metal rings. I'm biting this other one. I, I'm sorry, I'm not going, I don't want to go down because I know if I go down, I'm not getting up. The whistle blows, guards come running, they break it up, I've got blood all over me, this kid's got blood all over him. I get taken to the, um, Infirmary. the hospital. <laughs> I'm sitting in this chair, these ties are looking at me and they're laughing at me. And I'm already feeling lousy about what's happened. And I've reacted and I threw a punch at this kid, this tie medic, and then I've been hit over the head with a bat. Knocked me out, um, and I remember um, waking up to this. I thought it was a girl. It's happened. <laughs> uh, says everybody in Thai, Thailand. Waking up to this. I thought it was a girl. Says everybody in Thailand. It's happened. Cotton ball over these cuts. I thought, wow, she's beautiful. Who is she? Gotcha. Oh, it's a lady boy, you know. And with her showing me some compassion and understanding. Lady boy, a term used in Thailand for a transgender woman. The term is often seen as offensive. And empathy. You know, it was... It? it? was nice to feel that, that so kind of intimacy. The, where is this going? If you can understand me. I was transferred to Klong Prem Bangkok prison. 
after about a year of being in Chiang Mai. In, in Chiang Mai, there was over 4,000 inmates, and that was a small prison. When I went to Bangkok, you know, I had 20,000 inmates, so it was, a, it, was a, it was a different kind of a deal there. And I was... You know, it, it was a different kind of a deal there. And I was warned that, you know, Bangkok was a lot more dangerous than, makes, you know, makes sense. Chiang Mai. Chiang Mai was more forgiven. Makes sense, Bangkok, big city. I remember sitting by this library one afternoon and this young Thai has ran past me. And I seen another Thai running behind him and he had a knife in his hand. The guy with the knife getting closer. Then suddenly, a tie next to me has come running out with, you know, it's just a metal chair. I just stopped this kid in his tracks and whacked him right across the face. He's at the floor. This guy's on him and he's stabbing him and it's a, it's a knife. It's not a homemade knife, it's a proper knife. And he's stabbing him and the death shots, they're going in the neck, they're going in the lungs, they're just, it's just cold, calculated, not in a frenzy, he's just stabbing him in the back, in the legs. And, and the screams were absolutely inhumane. It was, so was it like it was a setup? The, the very, you know, depths of his bowel, it was horrible. Um, mm -hmm. And I just stood there. Like, Minding your business, as you should have. Transfixed, I couldn't intervene. It was like it was happening in slow motion. I looked around, the crowd started to gather, it was about 50 people, and they were screaming, calm on, calm on, calm on. And I didn't know what that meant at the time, but I do now, it means kill him. And that's what they were all chanting, kill him, kill him, kill him. What kind of prison is this? And um, these two commanders just casually walked over after the, the crowd had dispersed. The guy with the knife had got off. He's on the floor in a pool of blood. I'm still standing there. There's a couple of other foreigners with me. We're all like looking at each other in disbelief. They go to the body, the commanders kick it. Notice it's not moving, it's lifeless. They get someone to bring a trolley in, put the body on it, and just cart it out. Straight out of a movie scene, it's crazy. The, the, they tell about some cow ma, cow ma, cow ma. Like, what? I'm used to hearing defense, defense. You know what I'm saying? Like, some Muay Thai boxing. Different. Thing. Are you able to talk about uh, your experiences with that? I'd had enough. You know, I didn't want to fight in the prison. I didn't want to um, be put in these shells on my own or, or left to rot. I thought I'm going to fight back. All the other ties looked at me, you know, with suspicion, and I got a pair of mitts, put them on, started punching away at the bag. And he seen that he had a few skills. And Taj loved to bet, you know what I mean? So he said, look, we've got a uh, song crown, which is the Thai New Year. I think it's in April. And uh, they have these big shows. You know, I got friendly with the, the boxing coach. He wanted to put me in with one of his best boxers called Pon. I remember getting in the ring that, that afternoon to cheers and applauds and, you know, people putting bets on me. and. You know, it was an incredible feeling, and, and I fought that guy and I beat him. And it was um, the respect I received from the rest of the prison and you know the boxers was um, was heartwarming. Did the, okay, so you did that. Did that also put a target on you? Like, okay, this is probably one of the better fighters in the prison. Let me see if like prisoners thinking like, um, let me see if I can take him out, or did you just have the respect of him now? And it was on the tight time, like leave him alone type thing. The feelings it gave me, you know, it was better than any drug I've ever took. And I'd always, like, regretted not having a career in boxing. Um, I don't know. It kind of humbled me. It gave me that discipline and that routine. It allowed me to, to face my fears. How, how long in total were you in prison in Thailand and, and what year were you released? I'd say three years 
I went in 2005, I got released from uh, Thailand, uh, England, September 2010. Wandsworth, London. And how did you feel upon your release? I felt um, it was a different it was a culture shock. I was finding a struggle to adapt to, um, to the UK way of living. I was comparing the price of everything, the people, you know, I was very subservient. It was yes, say, no, say. You know, I was beating, I was beating down when I was in Thailand. I was, you know, you had to really be below the guard, so everything, even like the, 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 the screws in, in Wandsworth were quite like, look, look, you're here now. I went to, they put me in prison in Wandsworth and I, I took away the mattress and slept on the floor. But then I wrote about it. And I thought to me, that was the, the most therapeutic thing I could do was write because, you know, I couldn't escape the words on the paper. How did you manage to get back onto a straight path from that point? Yeah, I bet you that is a big culture shock, like a big, big crate, like going from a Thai prison where 80 people in a room, going to a UK prison where you got your own personal toilet in the cell, porcelain, probably blocked off with a curtain, PS2, you know what I'm saying? You can wear your own shoe. You got Air Max vapors on. You know, different. So it went to me. It was um, be a, like a, a, a detox initially. You know, get off what you was on. I knew there was a way out because I'd been there before. I just had to kind of put this into to, to play. You know, apply it to my life. Get through the detox. Get through. Um, Get myself back into recovery. I thought, okay, I need to, to start, you know, building a bridge to normal living, get a job, True. you know, get yourself a house, get a car, all the stuff that we're meant to do in life and get, you know, and I think I got it too quick. I wrote a book that became like a bestseller within six months, which was quite bizarre. It, it ain't bizarre, you had a crazy story. You were a Liverpoolian in a Thai prison. That's a that's tough. It became a movie and like I was overwhelmed. Oh, a prayer before dawn. It's a movie, huh? Okay. A prayer before dawn. Okay. Along with uh, the producers and people knocking at my door and ringing me up, and actors getting, you know, um, casted for this role and scripts and directors, and it was like, oh my, you know, and I didn't know how to deal with it all. She, nobody knows how to deal with that. Stupid game. You know, and then I get it with cancer, stage three. You know, and yeah. this man survived a Thai prison. <laughs> then gets hit with stage three cancer, and it looks like he's on remission. In the midst of it all, and my dad has just passed away the year before. Wow. And uh, I was put on chemo. And. I went from 16 stone to 9 stone within 12 weeks. Lost all my hair. I got a big payout of this from this movie. Work paid me even though I couldn't go in. I had credit cards, I had loads of money. I was clean for five years. I hit the road hard running and spent every penny I had. I thought I was going to die anyway and going to go out with a bang. And then survived. Yeah. Um, Finished the course of chemo. There was nothing left of me. I lost my house, I lost my car. I went to the oncologist, sat there thinking, okay, I'll accept my demise, this is it. You know, and he went, Mr. Moore, you're okay, you, you know, glad to say you're gonna, you're gonna be fine. Spent all the money then beat chemo, and now you just thinking like, God, God, I'm alive, but I can't catch a break. You've cleared the cancer. And I went, what? What you mean? I was like, you having a laugh? <laughs> I said, I'm all, I owe all kinds of money out and I've got to, you know, calm down. He said, at least you need to pay the bills. 
And how are you now? Brilliant. They said I couldn't have kids. I've never had children. Um, you know, now I've got a two-year-old. Yeah, so he's a... Congratulations. Yeah, he's a miracle, so, yeah. And uh, forgive me for being emotional, because... Uh, kind of, like... It's always... It's always something that I've wanted in my life is to nurture a little me uh, and allow sort of like him to have his choices and 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 you know do what he'd like to do instead of being beaten and battered. And I could never imagine like hating him the way I was hating. You know what I mean? It's given me like that opportunity to to. The last like forties that I watch is like kids, kids, kids always change people's lives, man. I'm glad though because the last four dudes like they come across are, like good parents, man. Change someone else and bring them up the right way. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. I'm gone. <laughs>